I wanted to give you an introduction to kind of be showing you what we're going to be doing in this tutorial so that you get an idea of what we're going to be doing before we actually get started. This is not the actual finished end product that we're going to be coming up with. This is the uh, where we left off on channel in chapter four, but it kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing and then we'll be expanding upon it and finishing it throughout the lessons. So with this lesson one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a Houdini asset that is going to allow us to kind of modularly build these steel structures. And it's really just designed to kind of teach you about a few different ways of approaching some problem solving and building some assets within Houdini. This one I'm just calling it girder tool and basically what we can do is just we can make girder structures and uh, it will, we can control the height, we can control the length, we can control the depth, we can control whether they're I-beams, C-channels, columns, and of course, we can control the corner beam size as well as the interior beam size. And most importantly, how many floors we want our structure to have. And as you can see from this tool, it's not finished, but that's what we're going to be finishing up. But I wanted to again give an introduction. So as I upload these videos to YouTube, you can get an idea of what to be getting into as I still finish producing them. So with that, let's just get started. Hello, and welcome back to another Houdini modeling tutorial. This is also going to be an introductory tutorial where we're going to be kind of not necessarily looking at what we're going to end up modeling, but how we're going to model it. And that's going to be the important aspect of this tutorial, as well as we're going to build a little bit of a tool so that we can see and how we can control our modeling uh, even through a simple structure to get kind of complex results uh, with an interface that we designed to do what we want it with. And uh, so with that, let's just get started. Just to make sure that we're on the same page here, you're going to want to make sure that you have create in context checked in here. So anything that's created will be created within uh, the network that we're within. And with that, let's just simply get started. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do, like always, is hit the tab key and lay down a geometry. SOP and then dive in there. I'm going to turn off the normals. And like usual, I'm going to delete the file SOP. Okay, now in this view, I'm going to hit spacebar 2 to come into the top view and I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to be using each one of these squares to draw a shape uh, that will become the basis for our uh, model. And we're going to draw actually a series of shapes. So with that, let's hit the tab key, type in C, U for curve. And let's lay down a curve. Turn on grid snap over here on the left, and we're going to keep it at polygon. Um, and I'm going to just click and drag and draw out the shape of an I beam. Delete that last one. You can always just hit the delete key to delete a point that you laid down incorrectly. So we have an I beam. I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to just kind of slide over here. I'm going to hit the tab key. It's already going to be down in there. We're going to lay down another curve. And this one, we're going to do a C channel. We're going to go in the same direction just so that we know that they're all in the same direction. This is an OK. So we've got a C channel. I'm going to hit return. I'm going to hit tab C curve. And I'm going to lay down another curve. And in this case, I'm going to do. I'm going to start right there, a little one in, you'll see why at the end. I'm going to come in and I'm going to create like a beveled channel. Okay. Okay. So now we've got kind of an I beam shape, a C channel shape, and a column shape. And these are kind of just simplified uh, versions for no real particular reason. I am going to just tr click and drag those points, hit the T key. And I'm just going to slam those down so that they're more like a um, real C channel. So that one's going to have an edit node attached to it. Okay. And then I'm going to come back here and look at these one by one. And this is our I beam. So we'll just call this curve. Oops. Curve. I beam. Okay. We know that this is the C channel. C channel. And we'll just call this one square. Okay, whoops. Again. 
their square. Okay, so we've got our three curves. And we'll be playing around with those in a little bit. Uh, the, but I am going to uh, append a transform node to each one of these. And I'm not going to dial it in quite yet. I've got some permanent default set up. And this one I'm going to call center object, center world. And basically what it does is it uses the expression uh, dollar sign CEX, dollar sign CEY, dollar sign CEZ to place the pivot at the center of the object. And then uh, just minusing those expressions and you'll see that dialed in, it puts it right where we want it at the center of the world. Okay, so that's that's a good feature because we're going to always want it to be at the center of the world. So I'm just going to copy and paste that two times. And truthfully, I'm going to come back and I'm going to readjust this. I'm going to delete these. I was going to do one for each one of them, but I find, I'm just thinking right now it's not necessary. I'm just going to put the switch node that I'm going to want to use there. And I'm going to dial each one into the switch node. And then I'm going to pipe that switch node through the transform. So now it should be that any time we switch, we are getting our object of construction through that switch node, which is what we're going to be wanting. And we'll make an interface for that in the end. Okay, so with our transform here that's working the way that we want it to work, I'm also just going to lower that uniform scale to like a 0 0.01 right now so that it's uh, not so large and it's fitting in the grid, but it's still uh, a perfect square. And it's working for all of our shapes, which is what we want. And then I'm going to actually append another transform, which is kind of like freeze transforms. It zeroes it all out. So we've got you know, nice good numbers to work with. We've got uh, everything where we want it right now. The pivots hit the center, which is fine. We could still, if we wanted to, uh, put in uh, the center object so it always stayed there like that. I've got these permanent defaults uh, set up. You can just type it in. You can always go save preset, you know, and you can, you, uh, you can save your presets down here. So, um, okay, so we've got it zeroed out. That's good. That's the way that we want it. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to hit tab L I create a line and that'll create a uh, polygon line and we're going to keep it at uh, NURBS for right now and we're going to set it down to degree two. And I was thinking a little bit earlier too that we might actually come back to these curves and set them back to NURBS degree two. And the reason is, is initially, I was thinking about this just a little while ago. So you'll see that, it, let's just come back here and take a look at this real quick. So. If I set it to degree three, you can see, you know, you, we start getting curvature. If I set it to degree two, we're going to be getting a linear NURBS curve. Uh, and in the end, we'll be able to do some stuff with the UVs that we can't do if they're uh, polygons. So let's, let's just change those back to degree two NURBS curves. That edit should still work. We're setting all the curves now to NURBS and to degree two. Just make sure that they all work, nothing is broken in the chain, and everything uh, seems to be pretty good. So let's just come back, hit spacebar G to bring me back to my item of selection, and let's zoom back out so that we can view our whole network. So we've got our line, and we've got our object that we're going to be wanting to sweep along that line. And in Houdini, you've got the line, it's moving in the Y direction, because it's X, obviously X, Y, Z, so it's one, it doesn't ever need to be more than one. And uh, it's a distance of one. You can always, you know, raise the distance, lower the distance, and it's order two linear. And it's set to nerves as well. So with that said, let's just lay down a sweep sop. And uh, the sweep sop in, uh, is in a kind of, a, 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 you know, to a sweep shapes along uh, a curve. It functions a little bit differently, uh, but you can see here that we need a cross section, a backbone, and this one's for reference points, which is an optional input that uh, we'll go over at another time. We're not going to need it at this point. So right now, what I'm going to just want to do is pipe this X form through the cross section, and the backbone goes to the nerves. And you can see immediately that we've got a little bit of a problem. Okay, so uh, and that's because what we probably are going to want to do is rotate it 90 degrees. So that it's flat on the axis, right? So 
Let's take a look at that and just make sure. And you can see that that is indeed what we're going to need to do. So I'm actually going to do that after this transform and you'll again see one little bit. It seems like a few transforms here, but that's just the way it is. Okay. And I'm going to pipe that one through there. We still get the same result, obviously. But if I come in here and I type in 90, okay, we get what we want. Okay. And at that point, I could come in and I could go skin with auto closure. And now what we have is we have our uh, I beam that is a NURBS surface, is linear, so it looks hard like a polygon would, which is great. And uh, we can obviously control the height by the distance. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm also going to use this line for uh, creating the end caps, which uh, you'll see how that's going to be done. So I'm just going to take this line, I'm going to create, I mean, sorry, I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to type in C for copy. I'm going to pull up a copy sop. I'm going to use the line as the input here, which is the template to copy to, and I'm going to take this transform, not this transform, and I'm going to pipe it into there, and you can see that our curves are uh, being copied to the two points, which is great. And if we were to now come back here, hit tab, merge, and merge those two in, you now have a completed I-beam object with end caps that um, we can control the distance with a line, which, you know, I mean, seems pretty simple, but in actuality is kind of a pretty cool uh, functionality. So now what we're going to want to do is I'm going to be basically, we're going to be auto-generating a, a um, kind of an I-beam steel structure that we'll be able to make any height we want and uh, have, we'll be able to tell it how long we want it to be, how wide, uh, rather how wide and how deep we want it to be, how tall we're going to want these ones to be. They'll all be uniform at this point and uh, so it'll just be a kind of like a uniform scaffolding type of thing and uh, with that let's just get started. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do first is I'm going to want to bring down another line. So I'm going to hit tab Li for line, even though it's probably already down in my node. And this one, let's just hone in on that. I'm going to want this one to be traveling down the x axis, not the y axis. So I'm going to put one there. You'll see that automatically, whoops, let me delete that channel, put the one back. It creates a 45. That's how you, how you would create a 45, is that it's going one and one, but we're just going to set that to zero. Okay. And initially, I'm going to set that distance to 10, okay? Just so that we have some, some kind of distance, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna append another copy SOP, and I'm gonna copy that I-beam to those points. So now, we have two I-beams on those points, and Obviously, if we increase the length, they'll spread apart. And if we increase the number of points, we begin to say how many I-beams we want. Okay. Now, the next thing that I can just see off the top of my head that I know that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come here. I'm going to want to create another transform SOP. Just pipe it through there. I've got to get my drag and drop. Preferences are obviously a little bit wonky right this moment. And um, I'm going to set my uh, permanent defaults, so center object, center world, so that uh, this object will always be created in the center of the world. And um, I'm going to uh, do some separation out here too, because like let's say I think in this structure that what we would want is we would want to maybe be able to have separate controls for the scale of these interior ones so that we could control just the corner ones. And we can do that with some expressions and a delete SOP. Before we dial in the line into our delete SOP, I'm going to append a uh, resample SOP here. So this is type in tab R for resample, and that pops up a resample node, and I'm going to pipe that line through the resample node. I'm going to click off maximum segment length, and I'm going to put on 
maximum segments. And we're going to, instead of controlling how many points this object has through our point, we're going to set this back to two. Um, we're going to uh, set it um, here, right? And so with that, then I'm going to then want to pipe the resample through the delete. And on the delete, we're going to need to make sure that we have it set to points and delete by pattern. And um, we are going to want to, first thing that we know is we're going to want to delete the first point. That's going to be zero. Okay. So after the zero, let's write a comma and a space. And then what we need to do is we're going to be writing an expression. And we're going to write an expression to delete the last point. Okay. So for that, we're going to use the expression endpoints. So let's put in a back tick. And then we're going to type in endpoints. You can see that it comes up. Should return, and you can see that we need a string surface node. So we're going to put uh, our parenthetical is up. We're going to put our quotes, and we're going to come up to that resample one. Hit return. End quotes. End parenthetical minus one, and you can see that if we set it to delete non-selected, we're left with the last two points. So let's kind of, we're going to separate this out. We need to copy this and copy that. So we have two deletes now that are being fed by that resample node. We've got our transform node down here. And um, not even sure, we're going to, we can, we can dial that in now. We can dial it in a little bit later. I think we're going to dial it in a little bit later. Right, because we have this one, and that's going to be our two I beams on the corner. So we know that that's going to be this line right here. So we could just pipe that through there, and you can see now that that's our two lines, right? And um, so we also need another one of these for this one. Let's just dial that in there. And we're going to need another copy node. We can just copy and paste that one because it's, it's taking the shapes that we want. And instead of the backbone from there, we're going to pull the backbone from there. And if we come to this resample, let's see. Oh, I've got to set this delete to delete selected, not non-selected. Make sure that you do that. And there you can see that we have all of our uh, uh, nodes there. There's obviously, there's quite a bit of them. So let's come back to this resample right now. Let's just lower that to like, just whatever, six for right now. So if we merge these two now, tab merge, pipe those through there, we have our complete set, right? So if we were to come back to this one, Right, or two points. And this is our interior pieces, and this is our exterior pieces. So if we wanted to here, we could come and append another transform here. I've got my drag and drop fixed, which is nice there. And we can set it to our permanent, I mean, our, I keep calling it permanent defaults, some of our defaults. It's the center object. But instead of the pivot being in the center of Y, we're going to change that to uh, Y, M, I, N, Y, min. So now if we scale it, it's just going to scale from the ground. And so if we come back here to our merge, we should be able to scale up those outer ones so that we have now fatter outer ones. But we're running into a little bit of a problem because we're doing uniform scale. And that's not what we want, right? We don't want uniform scale. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to link the X and the Z. So let's come into scale and hit copy parameter. And over here, we're going to do paste copy to relative reference. And now we can make them thicker or bigger, but they're remaining 
at the same height, which is what we want. Okay, so let's just do a little bit of cleanup here. So I'm going to just enlarge that. Back here, I'm going to hit the D key and bring up my uh, view pane, uh, rather than my perspective my, or my camera view references, and come into the network editor display options. And I'm going to come into uh, grid snapping. And I'm going to turn it on lines so that we have a grid, because our grid's going to kind of get a little bit complicated at this point. And we're going to do some cleanup work. We're going to begin to be build the asset before we proceed further uh, in the length so that we can begin to get some of these controls through an interface rather than coming and having to kind of come back to these nodes all the time. So, and I'm going to put on snap to grid. I'm going to close. And I'm just going to clean up. And I'm going to pause the video while I clean up. You could do this on your own, not do it, whatever. And I'll be back in a minute. So I've cleaned up the network a little bit. I've just snapped it to the grid. I've given myself a little bit of separation over here for these curves because eventually we'll be pulling those for a few other things here. And I'm just going to add a uh, backdrop node to there by selecting them and hitting up over here. And uh, I like to color. If you hit the C key, it'll bring up these colors. I like to color my geometry uh, blue. It's just a personal preference of mine. And we're just going to be calling this shape curve. I always do these in all caps too. Shape curve network. Okay. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to grab all the nodes because we're going to begin to build our digital asset right now. And I'm going to take off caps lock, make sure that that's not on. I'm going to hit shift C. I forgot that the backdrop, I should have just created it afterwards. And we've got our subnet. And now I'm going to uh, uh, click over it, and I'm going to uh, go create digital asset. And uh, we're going to call this digital asset girder tool. Why not? Whatever. It doesn't really matter. And uh, girder tool here. Uh, we're not going to actually have uh, any inputs at this point. Uh, we don't need them. The, the, the node will be all self-contained within its own. And uh, we're going to just hit accept. And that's going to bring up our edit type properties. Um, and we know a few of the properties that we want. We're probably going to have to kind of go back and forth. But if we come on over here to the parameters, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder. And let's call this folder... Um, uh, girder options, right? Whatever. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to call it. Girder options. Copy and paste that. Get rid of the, the underscore there. And uh, the first thing that we're going to start off with is a uh, what shape are we going to have. So with that one, we're going to want to create an ordered menu. So we just pop that on over here. And we'll call this uh, shape. And we'll come over into the menu options. And you can see that we've got menu items and then we've got token and label. So we're going to start off with zero. And zero, we're going to call iBeam. Okay. Then we're going to do one and we're going to call that C channel. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to hit uh, two and we're going to call that uh, column. That's, that'll be the beveled shape. Okay. And then we're going to come over here and we are going to put in a few floats. And before we get too far, we'll uh, apply them and go in and, and, and see what they're doing. So I'm going to uh, want to put in uh, a float for height. We might change some of these names down the road, but for right now, we can just stick with these. And I'm going to have, uh, uh, I'm not going to set any range, uh, and I'm going to set the default to one. And I'm going to hit, uh, let's not apply yet. And then we're going to need another float, and we're going to say, call that one uh, length. Length. And under the channels again, under the defaults, I'm going to put in one. 
And uh, then what we're going to do is we have one more, uh, and this is actually not going to be a float. This is going to be an integer, and, and an integer is obviously is just going to be you know one, two, three, no no decimal places. And we're going to say um, this one. We are going to set a range. They can never have less than two, right? Because those would be just the corner pieces, and uh, and we are going to lock that, and then. Uh, the range on the slider, let's just set that to 20 so that we have a little bit of a range in the slider. And under the defaults, we're going to put in 3. And we're going to call this number of beams. For now, we might again change some of these names. I'm going to get rid of these underscores. And I think that that's enough for us at this point to uh, hit uh, apply. And then we can just, you can, if you hit accept, the window will close. If you hit apply, the window will stay open and we can just minimize it. And um, we're going to come back here. And you can see that we have our menu has been created here. Okay. And you can see that we have a few choices. They're not doing anything at all, zero, at this point. And so let's start doing some copying and pasting. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is look that says label. So let's just fix that real quick. Let's go back to the edit properties. And under uh, the menu, I forgot to copy the shape. So let's just hit that and hit, uh, this time I'll hit accept so that you can see how to bring it back up. And it, the window is now gone. And now we have it says shape in iBeam. So let's just copy that with uh, copy parameter. So with our parameter copied, let's just dive down into the network. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come in and address that switch node, switch node one. And so if we just come in here and select input, so it's just paste copied relative reference. You'll see that no change happens. But if we were to come back up here and now set uh, that to C channel, it becomes C channels or columns. And uh, we're good to go. So with that, let's also just grab this height one while we're here. And we're going to copy parameter. And we're going to want to go to the line that designates our height, which is going to be right here, right? So here under height, let's, in the distance tab, let's just paste copied relative reference. And again, if we uh, come down, we can see that it's worked, right? It's no big deal. So let's come back to the the regular menu and for length let's now copy that parameter and come over to the length the line that is our length and let's paste copied relative reference and uh, if we come back up now and we start adding in the height and the distance we'll begin again to get our get back to where we were. Now the only one that's not working at this point is the number of beams and uh, remember we have it set to a, a low default of two and let's just keep it at that and let's hit copy parameter and this one's going to be uh, a little bit trickier right because this one's going to actually have to go into this resample here and If I just hit paste copied relative reference, you can see that in the number of beams, we put two and we got three. So that's real simple to solve. It's just a minus one. Okay. So we always have a minimum of two. But if we now come back up to our tool, you can see that the interior ones start to grow. And we have the beginnings of a system that we could use to build our eventual girder system. So with that, that's the lesson, that's the ending of chapter one. See me in the next lesson for chapter two, where we will uh, continue on with this. Um, we will create the first bottom floor, add in the horizontal supports, 
see how we'll eventually be able to add in some details around here in the uh, maybe some corner brackets and then see how we can duplicate it along the spectrum all within the confines of the tool. So I'll see you in the next lesson.